Morning church, how are you going? So good to see you in this place this morning. Uh, this is such an exciting Sunday. There's, I, I love these Sundays. I love the, the big Sundays in the life of our church where we make an impact. Christmas, Easter, and this Sunday is one of those impacting Sundays. Uh, I love to see what God does in people's lives. I, I don't know about you, but I love the testimonies. I love hearing the stories of how people can grab hold of something and then take them into their future. And a simple thing like the prayer list, uh, and if you haven't filled one of these in, I really encourage you to fill it in. Start to believe God. Write down what you're believing God for. I love Maddie and Greg's story. You know, here they were believing for turf. And then two years later, they're in a new house and a new business. And what God has done is an amazing thing. But it's just story after story after story. And the reason they're powerful is because it's faith. It's not just, oh, well, ah, oh, yeah, we'll write a story. No, it's actually faith that brings it to action. I can't encourage you more than but to write your prayer list down. Write what you're believing God for down. I love the scripture that's on the bottom of this particular card. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. And because I'm going to be with the Father, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. So the Son can bring glory to the Father. And yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. John 14, 12 to 14. There's something about the ass that is so important. There's something about having a big ass that honours God, you know. It's no longer is it just a little ass. I love the way God answers little ass. Like we ask for something and you look back and go, oh, wow, that was so small. But he answered it. And all of a sudden that builds some faith in you. And then you start to ask for big things and you start to say, God, come on, let's do this. And he loves that. He responds to faith. That's what God responds to faith. He, he actually grabs hold of your faith and works with you. So I really encourage you at this, this season, and we call it a season, season of generosity, it's a season of faith. It's a season of activating who we are in God to the things that He's called us to. And the way we say it in the life of this church, that you'll know God. At the end of the service, there'll be an opportunity. If you don't know God, there'll be an opportunity to come into that relationship with Jesus, to find freedom. Not just the, the freedom as, oh, you know, I'm free, but freedom in every aspect of life. Freedom to, to live free, to know, to discover your purpose, why you're on earth, that part of what we do in this season expansion is to expand our vision from where we are to where God wants us to go, to actually grow the call of God. No matter where you are, no matter what stage of life, God wants to grow you, the impact you have to make a difference in the world. That God has called you, your position, 2021, Toowoomba, to make a difference in the world. You imagine if you can catch the breath of God for your life, what could happen? What could you do? What could you and God do? I get excited by that. I love what we're doing in the life of this church. I love that we've bought 100 acres and we've, we've passed another milestone this week. It was proved by the national executive of our movement of the purchase. So all green lights so far. And, and I'm excited by that, but I'm excited that we can be part of something that we're not gonna necessarily get all the benefit from, but the future generations are gonna be changed. And we can be part of that. We can sow seeds into, into that future. And that's part of what this offering is today, is sowing into that, sowing into our online campus, sowing into the lives of children, sowing into red frogs to make a difference, saving a generation. And that's what we're part of as a church, to make a difference in the world. That Highlanders are not just passive churchgoers, but they're people who know their God and will do incredible exploits with Him. I want to encourage you around this today. So write your prayer list out. Uh, on the expansion offering, and we do this every year, there's a pledge card and we'll receive the pledge cards at the end of the service. Uh, but we do it every year and, and one of the things I know is that sometimes we, things change. Our lives change, we might have made a pledge and, and circumstances have changed in our life and we, we sometimes struggle with the vow we made. Our heart as a church that we don't want anyone to carry any guilt or any shame or anything like that going forward. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to release those pledges. 
So if, if you uh, made your pledge, all that's wonderful. If you didn't make your pledge, it's all wonderful as well. And, but I don't want that to hang over your life in any way, shape or form. So let me just pray for you for a minute. Father, I thank you for, either, for every pledge we received this year, for the difference that it's made. And it has made incredible difference in people's lives. Father, for, for the ones who... who pledged and had faith and held on to it, Father, but circumstances have changed, be it through COVID, be it through work, be it through whatever. And Father, they haven't been able to make that pledge. I release them today. They're no longer bound to it, Father. I thank you for the release that they are free. And Father, we believe you. We believe you for that freedom to be across every aspect of our church. In Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, it's so important to us when we do these things that it's, we're not... It's not a, a thing where we just talk about money and, you know, take money up. It's not our heart. Our heart is that people find freedom in this, people find faith in it, and then people are blessed out of what we do. That's the heartbeat of this church. So I want to take you back to the foundations of this particular offering. It started out many, many years ago where we took and received an offering and we called it 2C9. And 2C9 was 2 Corinthians 9. Uh, and we've, this year we've, we've changed that, that slightly to be expansion because we believe God is calling us to expand. We believe that right now, 2021, 2022 and going on is the greatest opportunity for the church. We live in this time which is an incredible opportunity. The whole world is crazy. Has anyone noticed that? It's a crazy world. Uh, and that with the craziness of world is the opportunity for God to move. And some cases we think, what can we do? Well, when we're weak, He is strong. Scripture says when, when we are weak, He is strong. If we put our hand up and say, God, we can't do it, but we want to do it with you. He gets involved in our life that we can make a difference in the world. And that's the power of what we have right now in 2021. And the foundation of what we do is 2 Corinthians 9 in this season. And this is what it says. But I say... But this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So it, let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Let me just stop there for a minute. As he purposes. Our, our heart is, in, and the heart of this church is, we would much prefer you to have it purposed in your heart than just get swept up in giving or be purposed in your heart and think, oh, well... I suppose I better give some money to the church. Sounds like they need it. It's not our heart. Our heart is that you purpose in your heart, uh, not grudgingly and not out of necessity. It, it's, it's, it's not out of a, ne a need that we do this. It's out of expanding vision and faith that we want to go forward in the things that God has for us and has for you. So the foundation of this offering is faith to take us into our future. It says, for God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace, grace abound to you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. And it goes on to say, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. I want to just make a point on that, that we've given to the poor. And sometimes in Christianity, we can be so focused on the poor that we miss the people who aren't poor. We miss people who are poor in spirit. And that's never God's heart. God's heart is for you. God so loved the world. He didn't just love the poor. He loves the poor, but He also loves the rich. And He wants the rich to prosper. He wants the rich to grow. He wants the poor to prosper. God loves all, but He wants all to prosper. And sometimes we can get so focused on the poor that we miss the fact that the wealthy in the world need Jesus just as much as the poor. Sometimes I think we need it because everyone in this room is wealthy more than the poor. We need to know God, isn't it? Because you see, when you're wealthy and determination of wealth in Australia, we're wealthy. So we're a wealthy nation. You know, you just did your census and you wrote down how much you earn and how many cars you have and all of those different things, how many TVs you have in your house. Not that it was one of those questions. But we are incredibly wealthy. And God wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be blessed. But what He wants us to catch is the cheerful giver part and He wants us to understand that He wants us to go and affect the world for others. And this is what it says. 
Now he who supplied seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown. It's an interesting thing. Who supplies the seed and the bread? God does. He supplies your seed and bread. God has given you your resource. He says, I'm going to supply you seed and bread. And then he says, and he says, supply and multiply the seed you have sown. So God says, effectively, here you go. I'm going to give you seed that you can sow it. And his expectation is that we sow our seed and eat our bread not eat our seed as well. I think we live in a world where we live in this consumption mentality where we consume everything rather than saying, hey God, what have we got for me to sow? Because this is the promise he says in this scripture. He says, I am going to multiply that seed. God wants to multiply what you sow, what you take today. And, and in our world, seed is money. What we take today and we write that down in our offering and we sow it, we actually have a promise that he'll multiply. Who's happy about that? I'm happy about that. I want to make a difference in the world. I wasn't born into this world just to go through the world and say, oh, well, there you go. I was born and died. I don't want that to be my testimony. I want to be a testimony that says, hey, I took every part of what God gave me and I squeezed every bit of it out of it and changed as much as the world that I could possibly change. And God's heart is the same for you. He says, I've placed you in this world to make a difference in the world. And more than that, I'm going to give you the tools you need. I'm going to give you the business. I'm going to give you the job. I'm going to give you all those different things. And all I ask you to do is take the seed part of that component and sow it. Eat as much of the bread as you like. You should have a good time. And the interesting part about this is that when you're having a good time, it glorifies God. It goes on to say that. It says it glorifies God that he'll multiply, that increase the fruits of your righteousness, which you're all enriched in all liberality, who causes thanksgiving through us to God. My heart, Moira and our prayer this morning as we're praying for you, that you will be abundantly blessed as we set agreement over you, that you will be abundantly blessed and the world will look at you and go, what is it about those Highlanders? What is it? Because God's given you seed and you've been obedient to multiply. And God's going to pour out a blessing on you. That's our heartbeat and the heartbeat of this season for you. That you will be blessed. You see, expansion is a faith step that affects your whole life, not just your finances. It affects your whole life when you activate faith. It's not just your finances that increase. Your whole life expands. You live a bigger, greater, better life. You have more influence. You see more lives changed. You see families and generations to come changed. I love that. I love seeing my kids prosper. I love watching them and watch what they do as God blesses them and they prosper. That makes my heart glad, but it makes the Father's heart in heaven glad as well when he sees you and sees you prosper and then your children and then the generations to come prosper. You see, today is a day to expand your faith. That's the aim of the day. Because You see, I find this, it's really easy to live in the comfort zone, isn't it? So easy to live in the comfort zone. Do you know the problem of the comfort zone? It's what we can do by ourselves without any help from anybody else. The comfort zone. It's don't need God. We think we don't need God. And we live in that comfortable area of life. You see, it's the I'm okay zone. She'll be right. I'm okay. No one else matters. The comfort zone. But let me tell you this, the comfort zone is not the safe zone, it's the self zone. The comfort zone is not the safe zone, it appears safe, but it's the self zone. You're excluding what God can do. You're living in what you can do. You don't need God, you can do it all yourself. I call the comfort zone the boring zone. 
boring. My poor wife's lived with me for nearly 40 years. We've been married for 40 years. Poor wife. Pray for her regularly, please. She needs all the prayer she can get to put up with me. And uh, I, I'm na- my natural instinct is expansion. My natural instinct is to grow. I'm always looking how we can do better, how we can do bigger, how we can change more, how we can... That, that's my natural instinct. And Moira's had to live with that. But gee, it's been exciting. We've had our ups and downs in it. But it's so exciting to see what God can do. We get out of the boring of just the everyday life. And so many people live in that, the comfort zone. Let's get up, have breakfast, put on the Today Show, cry about the world, go to work, check your Facebook, check your Instagram, get jealous about what everyone else is doing, come home, whinge to the wife, have dinner, watch Netflix, go to bed. Welcome to the boring zone. When God's calling us to live an exciting life. He's calling us to change the world. He's calling us to find people. He's given us gifts and a purpose, not just for ourselves, but for others. He's put these gifts and these talents into us that we can change the world. And the exciting part of that is life is exciting. It's never boring. Never boring. When you put yourself out in the faith zone, the promises of God are amazing. I, I love a, I love um, Peter in the Bible. I love him. He's just one of those, my favourite characters. Everyone else is sitting in the boat and they're all petrified because the boat's going to sink and they're all thinking the boat's going to sink. These are fishermen, you know, and they're all petrified. The disciples are going, wow, what's going on? And Jesus walks right past them, which I love as well. I love the fact that Jesus was going by. And maybe Jesus is going by your challenge. And you're sitting in the boat, worried. It's going to sink. God doesn't care for me. But all of a sudden there was Peter and he sees God, Jesus walking past and he goes, Jesus, can I walk on the water too? And God goes, Jesus goes, yeah, come on, Pete. And he steps out and he walks on the water. He walks out of the comfort zone of the boat and steps in to the faith zone, into the performance zone. And he's the only one that walked on the water because he got out of the comfort zone to make a difference. You see, faith takes you out of your comfort zone into your performance zone. And it's only faith that does it. Faith takes you out of that comfort zone, puts you in that place where you perform and you see God move. Funny in that, play, in that performance zone, that's where I find people look around and go, oh, gee, you're lucky. Look at you, you're so lucky. Liam, you're so lucky. And the harder he works, the luckier he becomes. The more trust he puts in God, the luckier he becomes. The more he steps into the performance zone, out of the comfort zone, the luckier he becomes. But what about you? Because God's calling you into this performance zone to make a difference. You see, in the comfort zone, our eyes look back. We live in our comfort zone. We're always looking backwards. Oh, the old days. Remember the old days? They were so good. Gee, they were good. Oh, I remember we had a custom line. And we literally did have a Ford custom line, big V8 clunk of a thing. You know the thing about the old days? Because every time we went away, Dad had to pack the toolbox in the back. Because we'd get down the road and the thing would break down. I remember one day it broke down and there he was climbs under the front of it, drops the sump off the V8 so it doesn't spill any oil, sits it on the ground. The, what had happened is the, the pit, one piston had broken and a hole in the top of the piston, so he dropped the rod out and drops the piston out, screws the sump back on and off we go again. Ah, oh, the good old days. How many guys today have thrown toolboxes in the back of their car, unless they've got an old classic like a custom line, because you still need to put the toolbox in the back for that. But we don't even think, do we? We jump in the car, drive to Perth. Don't even think about it. Because it's reliable. You know, sometimes we live in the fallacy of the good old days. I remember when I was at school. It was so good, you know. There I was working at McDonald's, earning $4 an hour. 
the good old days. And then you're out working as a lawyer and you're earning $450 an hour. They're much better days. Sometimes we think we get looking backwards rather than looking forward. And God is calling us to look forward. He really is. They may be the old days and they were good in their day, but they're not good for today. God wants you to be successful today. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It's a story about Abraham. He was known as Abram at the time. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your father and your family and go to the land that I'll show you. I think, wow, that's pretty cool. But have you ever left the land? you ever left somewhere and gone where God's called you and all of a sudden, all your family have gone, all your networks are gone. Who's going to babysit the kids for crying out loud? Well, it's true, isn't it? Here's this guy taking this step. He stepped out into the future. See, God always asks you to take steps of faith into your future. He doesn't ask you just to drift into your future. He asks you to take the steps of faith that lead to the promises of God. Genesis 12, 2 to 3 says this, And I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make, your fa- make you famous. And, when you, and you will be a blessing to others. I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. What an incredible thing. Here's Abram said, right now, Abram, you're going to leave your nation. You're going to go to another nation. You're going to leave your family. But these are the promises. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. Not just Instagram famous. But famous, so famous even today, that same promise that he gave Abraham exists for us. You can grab hold of the promise of Abraham, the promises that God had given us. And this is what it says. If, if I do that, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you famous. And this is God's expectation. And you will be a blessing to others. You see, when God makes you great and famous, and there's people in this room who God wants to make you great and famous. There's some people in this room, you're called to do amazing things. There's people in this room who have done amazing things. I love the pictures of the past we put up. The amazing things that you've done, even in Highlands, even in this block of land here. And we're going to do it again at Highfields on the 100 acres up there. And we're going to do it again in another place. I sense God calling us to do what we do to affect the world. You see, we can live in our comfort zone. We can live in the four walls of a lovely building with air conditioning and pretty lights. Or we can change the world. As for me, my house will change the world. How about you? Will you change the world with me? Because that's what God's calling us to do. The promise of Abraham goes, he says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. And sometimes you will be treated with contempt because sometimes when you're successful, people look at you and go, oh, that'd be right. That'd be right. What are you doing that for? Who do you think you are? God says, I'm going to take you and bless you. The hand of God is upon you. Sure, some may keep you with contempt, but God's not going to bless them. He's going to bless the ones that get behind you and say, well done, thank you for making a difference in the world. God's going to bless them and bless you. That's why I encourage you out of Romans 12 that says, outdo one another with honour. Don't pull people down, lift people up. Go opposite to the Australian culture and says, I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to praise you. People that make a difference, people that step out and do a good thing, praise them. They take their steps of faith. I bet all those other guys that were sitting in the boat when Peter walked on the water gone, I wish that was me. Then the promise is all the families on earth will be blessed through you. See Highlanders, as you step out and expand today, it's not just for you, for the future, for the generations to come. All the families When you think about Highfields, imagine how many families are going to be blessed by that. When I think about Middle Ridge here, how many families have been blessed by this church? Thousands of people given their life to Christ, changed lives. I look at all the school kids that go through our school. Thousands that go through, blessed. I see them now changing the world. I see people in this congregation that I look across. 
changing the world. They'd been through this place, been through the school. Look at Josh Sharp there. Builder, changing the world. You can look across the room. I can call you out because I see the things you're doing. Changing the world. Look at Dave and Andy, changing the world as they pray for people and see people find freedom. I love that. I love that. Bill and Julie, I saw them before, changing the world. I look at Layla there, starting to become a lawyer because God's called her to make a difference. What about you? Because God wants you to be that person that blesses the future, the families, the same Abrahamic Abrahamic promise belongs to you. The question is, will you do it? Will you do it? The seeds you plant today will produce fruit for years to come. Why do we do it every year? Because we sow for the future. I love Greg and Maddie's story. First year they were believing God for turf. Let's believe God for turf. And they did. And their house sold. And they said, let's believe God for a house. And they did. And they got a house now that's brand new. Let's believe God for a business. And they did. And they got a business now that's making a difference. A couple of months old, already got their first staff member as God continues to grow it and grow it and grow it. Because that's what God's heart is. God's heart is that you grow. God's heart is, see, it's not about the money. Money is just our point of faith today. That's what we put the point of faith on. We sow that. We sow our tithes every week. It's a point of faith. We take the promises of God. And right now we're taking this offering. It's a point of faith. But God's more interested in you. that you'll know him, not just know of him. That you will find freedom, not just get stuck in just having a boring life, going through life, but you actually find freedom where you celebrate life every day. That he'll take your disappointments, and many people in this room have been through disappointments, and he'll turn those disappointments into incredible blessings. You discover your purpose. Make a difference in the world. But it all begins with knowing Him. Do you know Him? Or do you only know of Him? Every service we give this opportunity that you'll know God. Not just know about Him. Not just know all the Scriptures, even though that's a good thing to read and study, know the Scriptures. It's about knowing Jesus. That He'll come into your life And your life with Jesus is better with Him than without Him. So I'd love to pray with you today. So would you close your eyes and bow your head? Father, I just pray for everyone in this room. Right now, that if they know God, you continue to bless them, that their faith will step out. They'll step out into their future. But Father, if they don't know you, Lord, I ask you to touch them today. Touch them right now. Speak to them. Speak to their heart. Hey, if that's you and I'm talking to you right now and I said those words that if you don't know Jesus, just while every eye's closed and every head's bowed and you'd like to know him, maybe you've been in church all your life, maybe this is your first day in church, but you'd like to know God, not just know about him. If that's you, Just while no one's looking around, every eye's closed, every head's bowed. I'd love you to raise your hand so I can see it, so I can pray for you. So look across this room. You see the the lifting of the hand is just that inward expression, outward expression of an inward decision. You're saying yes to Jesus. I'm putting my hand up and saying yes to Jesus. So right across this room right now, if that's you, and you've never given your life to Christ, or you've been away from God and this morning you're coming back and saying, yes, I want this life that he's talking about with God. I want to give you that opportunity. So would you raise your hand right now as I look across this room. Last time I'm asking this morning, two people gave their life in the first service. How about you? Don't go home without him, friend. 
Last time, I'm do, last time this morning I'm asking, I don't want to prolong it, but I don't want to delay it because I don't want you to miss. I see that hand. Awesome. Thank you so much. So good. So good. Life change forever. So good. Last time. Very last time. Awesome. Let's pray together. If that's you and you raised your hand, and for the person that raised their hand, pray this prayer with me. Maybe you were in your seat and you wanted to raise your hand, but you thought, oh, someone might see me. Pray this prayer anyway. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. It's a simple prayer. It goes like this. But you just pray it from your heart, very really. Say, dear Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Forgive me for everything I've ever done wrong. Make yourself so real to me, Lord. I accept you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for those people that gave their life to Jesus. That's fantastic. Best decision you'll ever make.